Okay, Mr. Mayor, whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you, Jason. All right, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Can we start with a roll call, please? Council President Perez? Here. Council Member Van? Here. Council Member Benedetti? Here. Council Member O'Halloran? Here. Council Member McIrvin? Here. Council Member Prince? Here. Council Member Corman? Here. Roll call, Mr. Mayor, all present. Okay, thank you. Uh, first up, we have a public hearing, and it looks like we have, is it Diane will be doing the presentation? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. We are ready. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. I'm Diane Utech, the Community Services uh, Department of Community Block Grant Specialist. I have a short presentation for you regarding the CDBG, CV, or coronavirus funds. Share my screen. So, uh, as when Congress approved the CARES Act, they allocated $5 billion to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And out of that, HUD allocated using their regular formula to entitlement cities. They gave Renton $419,569. And with the proviso that CV funds must be used to prevent, prepare for, and respond to coronavirus. The eligible uses for the funds are public services, assistance to microenterprise, and assistance for for-profit small businesses. CDBG funds are subject to numerous federal requirements. HUD did waive a couple of them uh, when giving out this money, but aside from the waiving the 15% public services cap, most of the regulations are still in effect. So agencies must have the ability to accurately track their time, client service eligibility, and a number of other federal requirements. So staff is recommending that we address the priority public service needs that we see, such as rent, utility, and food assistance. And we propose splitting the funds into 300,000 for rent and utility assistance and 101,000 for food assistance with 10,000 going to the city for planning and administrative costs, which are planning distribution of funds, contract management and community outreach. And King County is actually, since the funds are channeled through them, are asking for 8,391 in administration funds. Uh, the reason we're coming to you with a process instead of a specific recommendation on agencies is that staff has to assess the agency capacity to accept and manage CDBG funds and deploy them quickly. There's a three-step process we're proposing. The first is to allocate emergency and rental assistance funds to agencies that have a current relationship with us and have current program capacity. Then if we can't allocate all the funds, we move on to allocating the same funds for emergency assistance to an agency that has a presence in South King County and an existing rental assistance program. And because there's a lot of funds out there and a limited number of agencies to handle the funds, if we still haven't allocated all the funds by then, we're gonna go through an open RFP process. A lot of agencies are reluctant to accept CDBG funds because the complexities in tracking and reporting so we will try to encourage them to accept the funds and get them out the door to our rent and residents. Um, our contingency plan is we, if we still haven't been able to allocate the funds, we want them to go to legal assistance to prevent or defend eviction. Once the uh, suspensions are lifted, which is currently happening August 1st, landlords will move to start eviction proceedings and residents will need assistance. Uh, the other great need in Renton is assisting micro enterprise and small businesses. However, these funds are not really a good fit for that. And we are recommending that 
other funds the city has be used for that purpose. So what we're asking is that you approve the process for allocating the funds, approve the contingency plan, authorize staff to proceed with the contracts and or contract amendments to implement the programs and authorize the mayor to execute contracts to implement the funded programs. Are there any questions? No questions from council. Great. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Okay, this is a public hearing. What's the wish of the council? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor I, uh, I don't know if we have got respondents. Do we have any respondents? I don't think so. I would have been told beforehand. Uh, oh, Jason, do we have any response to this? We, we have three emails I received just uh, recently. Oh. Uh, one is from Amber Schneider from uh, Salvation Army. Another is from Roberto Perez from the Centro Rendu Latino Services of St. Vincent de Paul. And another from Lani, uh, Lonnie Cavett from St. Vincent de Paul. All explain how the need in the community has increased over the last few months and requesting additional help uh, from these funds. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council President Perez. I move to close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor? Aye. Uh, yes. Could I ask if there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the public hearing? Please raise your hand. Dr. Linda Smith, if you'd like to speak oh. to the public hearing, go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, I um, I just, I mean, I'm just becoming aware of this, but I am concerned that the agencies that distribute the funds ensure that um, equality and equity is provided to the residents in the city of Renton. And I know typically they tend to go towards the same agencies that distribute the funds, but I am concerned about that that uh, the residents of the city of Renton have access to those funds without a lot of hassles. So I just, I'm just really concerned about that. So thank you. Okay, is there anyone else from the audience that would like to address the council on the public hearing? Please raise your hand. Uh, I see none, Jason, you can check the telephone. Is, is there anybody on the telephone who would like to speak on this uh, public hearing? I'm sorry, go ahead again. Go ahead. Hi, this yes. is Tim Patterson. Okay, go ahead. Hi, um, so my name is Kim Patterson. I've lived in Renton for 32 years. I'm a former arts commissioner. Um, I think to address some of the inequity in the city of Renton would be just some basic RSJI training for board members. Um, when I was a board member, I heard some uh, interesting opinions on why uh, some people may have issues with the uh, city of Renton police. And so, I'm sorry, is this regarding the public hearing? Yes. Oh, for the COVID fund? Oh, sorry. Yeah, there'll be a, there'll be a, uh, a portion where you can speak during the regular audience comment in a moment. Okay, thanks, Mr. Mayor. That's it. Uh, I have nobody else. Mr. Mayor. Okay, Council President Perez. I move to close the public hearing. I second. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member President Perez and seconded by Council Member Corman that we close the public hearing. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, public hearing is closed. Uh, next, we have administrative report. Okay, Mr. Mayor, we have two items on the admin report. Uh, one is regarding economic development staff continues to provide guidance to Renton businesses. They've compiled a uh, local, state, federal, and private resources available at whyrenton.com, W-H-Y-Renton.com. They're also providing Renton businesses a free open for business or, or open for pickup banner. And you can email thrive 
T-H-R-I-V-E at rentonwa.gov to request a banner. Additionally, uh, construction continues to progress on the second phase, second and final phase of the Sunset Neighborhood Park and Renton will welcome a new amazing park later this year as recreational areas reopen. During the past several weeks, installation of play equipment, exercise equipment, pergolas, gazebos, and site furnishings have started to be erected. Features uh, play equipment for ages two through 12, includes climbing structures, and there's an adjacent uh, parent plaza with picnic tables and umbrellas. A large grass area is open, and it features the Wings art piece. Uh, that's all, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jason. Okay, next we will open up a uh, remote audience comment period. It remains the strong intent of the city to have public comment regularly included on our agenda. However, the city reserves the right to eliminate or end these public comment periods and or remove anyone from the meeting at any point if we deem the system is being abused or is no longer suitable to allowing the city to conduct its necessary business. Uh, each speaker will be given five minutes to speak. You will be called upon by Julia Medzigian, Council Liaison. Ms. Medzigian will call the speaker's name, unmute the appropriate microphone, which will send you an automatic prompt to the speaker um, that you have been unmuted. Uh, this is the speaker's cue that it's your turn to speak. Please begin uh, your comments by stating your name, city of residence, and the topic you're addressing. Uh, the speaker should be able to see a timer on the screen. When the time nears uh, one minute mark, please wrap up your comments. Ms. Medzigian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. For the record, my name is Julia Medzigian. I'm the city council liaison. I currently have seven people signed up to pre-registered to speak. Uh, Andre Brown, you can start now. Please give your name and your city of residence. Okay, my name is Andre Brown and I live in the city of Renton. And I guess I would like to speak on the Parks Department. I believe I had uh, given an email to the council and the mayor. Um, hopefully you take a look at that. But I'll just restate what I said in the email that I was hopeful I'm trying to advocate for basketball courts to be back open at City Parks in Renton. I believe now that we're in phase two of uh, reopening that King County has a, a life for. And again, I would just like to advocate for that. I know a lot of people use basketball as exercise. And I know for me, it's been a while since I've actually been back on the basketball court because I've been trying to respect the wishes of, of people and respect what's going on and things like that. But I believe now it's time to have a return of basketball and have a return of exercise and recreation of that nature. If you also look, you can see that uh, the Seattle Parks Department has um, reopened basketball courts and other park amenities. Um, as, as you can see, there's a tweet on June 12th that they did so. And again, I would just, do, I want to advocate that I, I really do believe that it's time that we open up basketball courts and things like that. because. An area 15 or 20 minutes away has already done so. And, and again, I think it's time. And I think that's all I have to see, say. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Kelly Beamer, could you speak to the, the basketball courts being reopened? Uh, yes, sir. We're actually evaluating that right now. We've gone through with um, through the WRPA, Washington Recreation and Parks Association, which has all the South Agency cities in there evaluating um, what other jurisdictions are doing. And it also has to do with our staff capacity. Uh, phase two is um, gatherings of five people or less. So it would be a conversation we're gonna have uh, with you, Mr. Mayor and the administration team on uh, whether or not we want to open that up because basketball typically is you know five aside. So that would be more than the five people or less, um, but again, I understand Mr. Brown's concern and wanting to get back out and, and get in some exercise. So um, again, we'll, we'll have that discussion tomorrow and um, evaluate and respond at that point. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. The next person I have signed up is uh, Joseph Todd. Mr. Todd, you can state your name for the record and uh, this, your city of residence and 
You've got five minutes. Uh, good evening. My name is Joseph Todd. Um, I live in Renton. Um, I had some prepared uh, words that I was going to speak about tonight, um, and this is in relation to the civil unrest that is currently going on across the country um, uh, because of issues related to uh, police brutality and black bodies. But, you know, I had a chance to go to the COW and listen uh, to the discussion. And I just got to say, um, I'm disappointed that when I look at the resolutions and the business plan that's coming through COW and it's talking about adding some language into the business plan around equity and inclusion, we got to be way stronger than that. It's been 400 years of just beating down black bodies, beating down marginalized communities. And all I saw was a bunch of milk toast guidelines around how we're going to try to do equity and inclusion and do some celebrations and, and do some training. Have you been to these trainings before? I have. I've been to equity trainings. The folks that need to be there, that, that need to listen, don't even want to participate. And when they are there and participating, they're, they're a distraction for the folks that really are trying to learn something. We're, we're, we're way past trying to be nice about this anymore. Yeah. This is personal. This is personal for me. I've got a black son. I want him to be able to dream and grow and do all the things every American wants their kid to be able to do. And, then that, and that's not going to happen if we continually push programs that really don't get to the root of the institutional racism that is ingrained in everything that we have. We have got to do something better than that. Period. Okay, if you're done, Mr. Todd, then the next person I have signed up to speak is Carla Bunn. Carla, when I unmute you, you've got um, five minutes to speak. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. I believe that for the city to move forward and towards equal opportunity and fairness for African Americans and indigenous people, we have to pass an ordinance or resolution to abolish structural racism hereby achieving racial equality and equity in the city of rent to be a city that's ahead of the curve and one that sets the standards for the other cities we have to ensure and that's a necessity that all residents achieve justice and impartiality in housing in finances in health care in employment policing education and in every other aspect of a person's life we have to first acknowledge in the resolution of the history of this land the 400 plus years of institutionalized racism an apology is owed by our local government to the historical wrongdoings that have been done to the indigenous and african-american people and communities as a city it is mandatory that we commit to making laws and policies that are not only viewed from the lens of uniformity but through an anti-racist lens as well this, this challenges the city government and all of us as a collective whole to do better for our communities. So to be specific, our city must, one, reassess the lack of fairness and justice in our outdated laws and policies. We have to amend the documents when needed and on an ongoing basis. This shows your commitment to working with our communities and addressing the societal issues in the city of Renton. We cannot have archaic laws governing our current times and our daily lives. We have to grow as our city grows. Two, we have to commit to hiring at least an additional 50% of people of color, which includes African Americans. This is what will reflect our current population in Renton and will demonstrate your commitment to establishing a government that's reflective of the people it serves. Three, we have to maintain a standing contracts index of at least 50% 
so that future construction contracts are made available to minorities. This will illustrate a commitment to elevating businesses owned by this subgroup who are rarely in line for government contracts. Four, since we're such a diverse community, create ongoing culturally and linguistically appropriate programs within the city. These programs will not only represent the minority sector, but will serve to bring us closer as a community. Through this, we'll learn to embrace our differences and learn about each other. Five, establish and require city staff receive at least five hours per month of anti-racist and sensitivity training as part of their monthly hours work. This will display a commitment to internal development and real change within our city government. And then last but definitely not least is number six, repair the damage done to our indigenous and black communities by investing financial resources now into our communities that are targeted to our communities. We need programs that establish reparations that are specific to us. This will be your opportunity to close the wealth gap and bring about real economic justice. So I thank you for passing an ordinance or resolution tonight to end structural racism and a path to achieving racial equality for black lives and indigenous people. I would also like to share about a year ago, I went into a local downtown restaurant to get some dinner and it was owned by an uh, immigrant uh, group. And as I walked in, I was treated with disdain. I had never been there before. The only reason I could think of for them to treat me the way they did was to color my skin. And I thought it was awfully telling of the fact that people can come into my country and treat me however they want to treat me. They can come here and they can get loans for a business that I can't get a loan for. They can come here and open up a small business that I can't open up. And it just, I think there's something really wrong for somebody to be able to come in my country and treat me the way that they treated me. So at this point, I just would like to, I am look, let you know that I'm looking forward to seeing how you will make a commitment to our communities. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Bunn. Um, I have Cynthia Blades Woods signed up to speak, but I don't. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. My next question is. Oh, she's up. The African American uh, young men, and um, I also have a, a testimony that I'd like to share as well. Um, I believe that the city, in order to afford to move forward, I, I believe that they should also. We can hear that. I, I can hear her. Um, let me see if I can move the phone closer to the other uh, mic. One moment, please. We're, we're getting some feedback, like an echo, that's making it hard to hear. Can you hear me? Can you hear her now? It did sound better, yeah. Can you, uh, can you please me? go ahead. Yes, my name is Cynthia Bladeswoods, and I'm a resident of Britain. I have two African-American young men, and I am concerned about equality and um, equitable justice for the young men of our community. Um, Paula had given a list of uh, recommendations, and I strongly support what she had just said, but I think it's very important to uh, make sure that dollars are equitably spent within our community, not only towards um, different groups but certainly for specifically indigenous and african-american groups and people of color and i strongly hope and believe that um i hope that something will be passed today an ordinance or resolution that's going to speak to our concerns of the community thank you okay and while we're on the phone i believe kim patterson is there and she had a comment to make as well miss patterson are you there oh. Hello. Hello again. Uh, sorry for cutting in earlier. My name is Kim Patterson. I've been a Renton resident 32 years, and I work on an Arts Commissioner. I just wanted to share a brief testimony about my time on the Arts Commission and why I believe more um, maybe racial, so race and social justice training is necessary to help increase uh, equitable distribution of city funds. Long story short, I was at a meeting. There was some talk about how police were doing crowd control successfully at an art project to where it was a big sidewalk project. The conversation geared towards why a comment pretty much concerning why police, why do they get a hard time? They were doing a great job. They're out in the community, blah, blah, blah. As a person of color in that room, I found that comment to be very insensitive 
given that different races of people have different interactions with Renton police, I myself have had very negative interactions, and that given the fact that these are the people, our commissioners, who are supposed to be reaching out to all groups, making fun available to all groups, is that actually happening if the mindset doesn't really include experiences had by all? So as we move forward to make Renton an equitable place for all residents, I really hope that we provide training to the folks who are responsible for helping to distribute some of those funds, provide access and equity in the arts and other forms of uh, participation we have as, as citizens of Renton. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kim. The next person I have signed up is Dr. Linda Smith. Linda, go ahead. Linda, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm Linda Smith, a rented resident. And I believe that for the city uh, to move forward towards equality and equity for, for Blacks, Indigenous, and other people of color, we need to pass an ordinance or resolution for ending uh, institutional racism and achieving racial equality and equity in all areas of Renton. Now, the King County Board of Health uh, on Thursday, June 18, 2020, passed a resolution declaring racism a public health crisis. As part of the resolution, the Board of Health says that it supports the King County and public health in the work of advancing a public health approach in addressing institutional and systematic racism. The strain of racism um, that Blacks, Indigenous, and other people of color in our community uh, that have to live with every day leads to differences in health and well-being, opportunities for employment, education, and housing, and have wreaked havoc on their lives, denying them life, liberty, and justice. As part of being a city that is head of the curve, we need to ensure that all residents achieve uh, equality and equity in all areas, including housing, economics, health care, hiring, uh, policing, education, and all aspects of people's lives. Again, as, as we've heard, as some say, we must acknowledge in the resolution the history of this land, the 400 plus years of institutionalized racism. An apology is owed because until we own up to the fact that we have uh, 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 in, imposed racism on people, we will never be able to move forward. And that's an important part of moving forward. We must include the voice of the community. How do we make decisions about how we move forward, and we have not included the voice of, of the community. How do a staff get to make a decision on distributing funds to a community that comes from the government, that comes from our taxes? These are the things that we that we talk about when we talk about equality and equity. And if the same people are distributing the same fund, that means that blacks and, and indigenous and people of color are gonna get the short end of the stick. It's not gonna change. As a city, we must commit to looking at the laws, and I'm glad I heard someone say that on the council tonight, looking at antiquated laws and policies, uh, not only in the uh, lens of equality and equity, but anti-racist, anti-black uh, uh, lens. And this challenge us as a collective whole and city government to do better for our community. We can do better. We have to change what's going on. We need to, as we've heard, uh, Collabon talked about uh, five or six specific things, and I reaffirm those. Uh, reassessing our equity land, uh, committing to hiring uh, an additional 50% of staff of color, including blacks. I cannot believe in 2020 we have no, no I mean, the number of blacks and, and other people of color, but particularly blacks in our city government, we pay taxes here commit to contracts. I can't believe that we still don't, have, you know, we every contract we hire uh, is somebody of, of a white color. That is not right. That is unfair to your black and people of color community and to repair damage done to our indigenous and black community. I have lived in this city for 38 years 
And as someone said, that our community needs to be sensitized. They need to hear from our government that all of us included. I had a white man walk by and spit on my car. And that should not be happening in 2020. So yeah, so I just, just really, I'm, I'm really compassionate. And I compel this to the city council tonight and our mayor is to really take a deep look, pull off the blinders and look at what's happening to blacks and indigenous and people of color in our community. Thank you. And we will continue to come here because like I say, we pay taxes too. We deserve the same gift of life, just as everyone else does. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Linda. The next person I have on my list is Krista Strasbaugh. Krista, go ahead. Good evening, President Perez, Mayor Pavoni, members of the board, and beloved community. My name is Krista Strasbaugh, and I am a Renton resident. I have had recent communication with Police Chief Van Bailey and understand RPD will be presenting at the July 6th City Council meeting of the whole. In the spirit of transparency and collaboration, I'm using my public comment time tonight to respond to the Chief's most recent email. Chief Van Bailey, thank you for responding to my inquiry regarding the Mayor's pledge to take action sponsored by the Obama Foundation. In your email, you carefully defend the current internal police systems in place that you believe contribute to racial justice. I appreciate your acknowledgement that your own journey toward racial awareness and identity began only a few short years ago. In 2014, as a result of police brutality and the consequent uprising in Ferguson, Missouri, which began the Black Lives Matter movement, you state, I will admit I will admit, being born and raised in Renton, I was ignorant to the issues of race and policing that we must face and fix today. At no point in my training was I taught decisions are to be based on race, ethnicity, religion, car, clothes, and gender. For many years, I came across neighbors, friends, and families I had grown up with. Race simply was not recognized by me personally and professionally as an issue. You go on to describe an encounter with a police officer near the beach where you were working as a 16 year old as the inspiration that led you into this field. I can relate to this because I also was raised to value community and that love is a verb. It's action oriented and often service minded. I'm highlighting your statements today because it's likely many of the officers you supervise share your level of experience. And I believe as another white person, it is important we hold each other accountable in the fight for racial justice. I need us to remember that policing as an institution began as an effort to patrol and punish enslaved people, especially those seeking freedom in Confederate states. White service-minded volunteers crushed uprisings, lynched people who had escaped, and forcefully entered anyone's home if they even suspected they were providing shelter for enslaved people. Tragically, and centuries later, we are still seeing very similar demonstrations of white supremacy by police playing out across our country. I am not accusing you personally of police brutality. I applaud efforts the city has taken in the last five years to make Renton a safer place. I'm grateful to the people of color who have labored to shape hearts and minds through their lived experience and expertise. I am, however, also challenging the idea that Renton is somehow ahead of the curve, that we are different, as you say. There is no ego in anti-racism. It begins with honest acknowledgement of harm. It does not seek to defend oppressive systems. It welcomes outside accountability and actionable steps toward dismantling white supremacy. It requires that white folks like you and I relentlessly inspect how we've internalized white superiority through systems that were founded to the center and uplift only us. The institution of policing as a whole is one of these systems. Has there been progress? Yes. Is the system still functioning the way it was intended to when it formed? Yes. 
The Minneapolis City Council is working to divest from their current police department in order to support a new and equitable model of public safety. Amy Klobuchar recently dropped out of Joe Biden's vice president search to support picking a woman of color. These choices are not radical. They are necessary in the fight for racial justice. Leaders are intentionally leveraging their privilege and power to make structural changes we all need. It can be troubling to begin questioning things we believe in. It hurts. But as James Baldwin wrote, I love America more than any other country in this world. And exactly for this reason, I insist on the right to criticize her perpetually. This is the path forward. There is a global call to step beyond diversity, equity, and inclusion and intentionally into anti-racism because race is the number one predictor of life outcomes. Black lives matter. We cannot wait for another life to be stolen. If Renton truly is different, will you honor Renton residents for changes, demands, and solutions regarding budget transparency, representation, citizen oversight, and mental health? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Strasbaugh. Uh, I have no one else pre-registered to speak. If you're in the audience and you would like to speak, would you please raise your hand? Okay, I have one. Winter Cashman, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to call tonight, first of all, to support um, a resolution or an ordinance or a business change, whatever is most significant to address structural racism. One thing I wanted to add after watching the Committee of the Whole is um, I applaud the changes that were that were made from the Inclusion Task Force, and I think they do a, a significant job um, with putting out communication to the city. And I was really excited about um, their addition of the education forms because I think that would have been useful um, in several instances where sort of um, communities here have felt unsafe. And one thing I've brought up to the city before, um, and I'll just bring it up again, um, was in the instances where we were going through almost weekly iterations of white supremacist propaganda being fired throughout the city. And there was no sort of significant effort for the city to address it. Um, and I went to the police department and um, I work with our li liaison a lot. Um, I think John Schultz does a great job, um, but it's not a criminal issue, and they're right about that. Um, it is a free speech thing. However, what can the city do to address it? Um, and did the city take any effort to do anything about that? Um, and then the second thing I want to get into tonight um, is the lawsuit from the Renton Police Department or the Renton Police Officers Guild or the city, I'm not sure which specifically, um, and several other cities which are currently blocking reforms that the county has already made. Um, and they've traditionally held um, an oversight authority. You can find articles going back to 2002 where they were using the inquest process. Um, and there was no sort of significant challenge to it. However, Dow Constantine um, and the county council went through significant administrative changes back in 2017 and 2018, which were addressed to help families that had been impacted by police violence. And those lawsuits are blocking that. And there's currently five families at least who are in pending investigation, some directly with Kent, some directly with Auburn, some directly with Federal Way. None of them are with Renton. But why are we part of holding that up? Um, I don't have anything else to add. Um, thank you so much for your time. Black Lives Matter. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Cashman. I have Dina Roscoe also raised her hand. Go ahead, Dina. Hello, my name is Dina Roscoe. I live in Renton, Washington. And I've been a Renton resident since I was eight years old, so that's a really long but not so long time. 
I wanted to support all the comments that have been made prior to mine regarding the ordinance and the need for a specific language that is very precise and a statement of apology to our black, brown, and indigenous people of color in our city. And just to add a couple of things that came to mind that are additional comments. Um, for further any future police investigations that have happened regarding police brutality, I personally would like to see those happen in a public forum rather than internally. Um, I know that there have been some incidents in the past, even in recent years, in the last couple of years, where there was some uh, allegations and and crimes against a woman that were made by an individual in the police department and he had resigned, but the inv investigation was handled privately and internally. And I believe that that, as a, as a public agency, needs to be in the public light to help bring more light to this challenge that we're all facing. The second uh, suggestion I had was for a memorial, for to work with the Rent Arts Commission for a memorial to um, black, brown, indigenous people of color who have perished for due to due to racism as a way to publicly show in our city that we are aware that this is going on and to use art to inspire change. Um, another comment I wanted to add was uh, my own personal experience with facilitating visioning and working with diverse partners and people groups to to bring uh, action more action plans and clarity that have already been proposed. But if if there are any um, roadblocks to that, I would would love to be of assistance in helping the city move forward with these recommendations. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Roscoe. Um, Thank you. I have no one else in the audience with their hands raised that has not already spoken to council. Is there anyone else that has not spoken with council? Mina Merchant, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hi, thank you so much. This is Mina Merchant. I live here in the Renton Highlands. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge and point out that um, I really appreciated all of the speakers that came from the community to speak out today and that I did notice it's a small thing, but it actually isn't small at all that you publicly thanked uh, one of the speakers who was not African American, but did not actually thank any of the African American speakers. So I just wanted to point that out. I think that's an example that just slides under the radar and definitely gets noticed. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else who has not spoken with council who would like to address council now? Please raise your hand. Okay, I see none. Jason, can you check the telephone? Is there anybody on the telephone who has not already spoken during this audience comment portion who would like to speak again or speak tonight? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, please state your name and city of residence uh, for the record and then go ahead. Uh, yes, my name is Darcy Jimistad and i am um, been a Renton resident for 34 years. My son was raised here and went to all Renton schools. And I am an employee of the Renton School District in the ECAP program at Meadowcrest. And I would like to um, just say that I am here um, to support this ordinance that has been put forth. And um, I didn't really prepare to speak, but I just want to say that I, I'm here and Black, Black Lives Matter. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak tonight? who hasn't already spoken. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I hear no one else. Okay, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Julia. Uh, um, next up, we- Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Can I, uh, for the record, uh, we did receive 11 emails all regarding uh, Renton's, uh, Renton's participation, I guess, in that lawsuit against the King County Police Inquest process. And I just want to make sure that everyone knows that those emails were forwarded to the administration and council. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor. Uh, I didn't hear who said that. It's Mr. Prince. Oh, Council Member Prince. Yes, I have an item I'd like to pull from the consent agenda. I believe it is item, item D. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, item D. No, no, item, no, item, no item, item E. I'm sorry. Yeah, item E. Item e. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council President Perez. I move that the council uh, conclude with the consent agenda minus item E. I second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President Perez, seconded by Council Member Corman. The council concur with the consent agenda minus item E. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, motion carries. Councilmember Prince. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, the the uh, FAA CARES grant funding, um, if we, we're in a tricky spot since it's the fifth Monday and we don't have a council meeting this coming week, um, it would, the uh, airport would lose out on being able to apply for these funds. So I move that the council concur in the uh, in item E. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved by council member Prince and seconded by council member uh, Corman that the council concur with item E and pass item E tonight. So all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, motion carries. Uh, let's see here. Next up is unfinished business. Council President Perez. No finished business. No finished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Van. Uh, no unfinished business. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Benedetti. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member O'Halloran. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member McGurvin. Uh, no unfinished business, Ms. Rayer. Council Member Prince. You can always count on the finance <laughs> committee as an unfinished yeah. So I have five finance committee reports. We're going to start with approval of claims and payroll vouchers. The finance committee approves the following payments. Accounts payable, total payment of $5,883,175.18 for a number of vouchers and wire transfers. And then payroll, total payment of $1,000,000. $477,804.04 for payroll vouchers, including 590 direct deposits. This is for the 516 through 530 2020 pay period. And Kidder's Matthews, Kidder Matthews vouchers totaling $22,295.91. Mr. Mayor. Council Mayor Prince. I move that council concur with the Finance Committee Committee Report. Second. It's been moved by Councilmember Prince, seconded by Councilmember Van, that the council concur with the Finance Committee committee report. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, motion carries. Okay, the next report from the Finance Committee is regarding the renewal of the city's property insurance for 2020 2021. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to renew the city's property insurance coverage through Alliant Insurance Services at an increased rate of 21.4% due to market conditions. The increased rate results in an annual premium of $507,991 uh, compared to last year's uh, premium of $418,368. The, uh, the mayor and city clerk uh, are recommended to uh, execute the implementing documents when ready. Mr. Mayor. Council Mayor Prince. I move that council concur with the Finance Committee committee report. Second. It's been moved by Council Member Prince, seconded by Council Member Van, that the council concur with the Finance Committee committee report. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, motion carries. Okay, the next Finance Committee report is uh, regarding the development block grants uh, that we discussed during the public hearing. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation uh, where Council held a, a required public hearing on uh, tonight, June 22nd, 
and adopt the process for the allocation of $411,178,000 in community development block grant CDBG CV funds and authorize staff to proceed with contracts and amendments and authorize the mayor to execute those uh, contracts and amendments to implement, it, to implement the funded programs. Mr. Mayor, Council Member Prince. I move that council concur with the finance committee committee report. Second. It's been moved by council member Prince, seconded by council member Van that the council concur with the finance committee committee report. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Okay, motion carries. All right, the final finance committee report is regarding uh, a local agency agreement supplement number one with WASHDOT. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to authorize the Mayor and City Clerk to execute local agency agreement supplement number one to contract 14044 with the Washington State Department of Transportation for the obligation of grant funding and all subsequent agreements necessary to accomplish the Northeast Sunset Boulevard SR 900 uh, corridor improvements project. Mr. Mayor, Council Member Prince, I move that Council concur with the Finance Committee committee report. Second. Been moved by Council Member Prince, seconded by Council Member Van. The Council concur with the Finance Committee committee report. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, motion carries. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Corman. Uh, no uh, unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is legislation, and we have one resolution. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, at, at this point, I would like to move that we suspend the rules and uh, address the agenda, make a change to the agenda to add an emergency ordinance for a citywide moratorium on applications for waived fees. Second. Okay. It's uh, it's been moved by Council Member Corman, seconded by Council Member Perez, that we suspend. You have to repeat that again. Oh, that we uh, suspend the rules and uh, amend the agenda. Suspend the add, rules and amend the agenda to add papers. this ordinance for for All first and second reading. By saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. And and Mr. Mayor, yes. um, the the clerk was was uh, pointing out that um, that this ordinance will need to go through both sec uh, first and second reading tonight. Correct. So I'll I, I'll move it appropriately uh, after after. Okay. Okay. In fact, in fact, with with that, I would move uh, I would move that the ordinance uh, be be read. Uh, I'm trying to remember the process that we would use here for, for first reading and advance for second and final reading. Yes, I would move that would be read for first reading at, at advancement to second and final tonight. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved that the ordinance be uh, uh, adopted and uh, moved to second and final reading tonight. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. Uh, okay. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to read the title of the ordinance for first okay. reading. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, declaring a moratorium on applications for waived fees, which is RMC 41210, due to economic considerations related to the COVID-19 pandemic, providing for severability, declaring an emergency, and establishing an immediate effective date. So, uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councilmember Horton. I move the ordinance be advanced to second and final reading tonight. Second. Okay, uh, it's been moved by Councilmember Corman, seconded by Council President Perez, that the ordinance be adopted and moved to uh, second and final reading tonight. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, I'm going to read it a second time. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, declaring a moratorium on applications for waived fees, RMC 41210, due to economic considerations related to the COVID-19 pandemic, providing for severability,
declaring an emergency and establishing an effective um, uh, an immediate effective date uh mr mayor yes Captain Corman. um okay so i would just like to clarify for anybody that's that's watching this that this um this doesn't this will not permanently eliminate the waiving of fees when appropriate but this does allow us to address some some uh, issues that we have currently with the way that we're approving waived fees and uh, given the current uh, economic climate and the pandemic it's very important that we get this right um, so this moratorium is the purpose of this moratorium is to give us the the allowed time to get that right so it's it's not to permanently eliminate waived fees when waived fees are appropriate. Um, having said that, I would then move approval of final approval of this ordinance. Second. Second. Okay, it's uh, it's been moved by Councilmember Corman, seconded by Councilmember Perez that the ordinance uh, be adopted as read. Is there any conversation before we take a vote? Okay, this requires a roll call. Okay, Council President Perez. Aye. Council Member Van. Aye. Council Member Benedetti. Aye. Council, uh, Council Member O'Halloran. Aye. Council Member McIrvin. Aye. Council Member Prince. Aye. Council Member Corman. Aye. Roll call, Mr. Mayor, all ayes. Okay, thank you. And then I do have a resolution for adoption tonight too. Okay. This resolution is regarding a public health emergency. A public health emergency resolution of the city of Renton, Washington, establishing a funding program and implementation plan for the city of Renton's CARES Act relief funds. Mr. Mayor. Council President Perez. I move the resolution to be adopted as read. Second. It's been moved by Council President Perez, seconded by Council Member Corman that the resolution be adopted as read. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Okay, motion carries. Next up is new business. And Council President Perez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, uh, we will not have meetings on July 29 because it is the fifth Monday. So on Monday, July 6th, the committee of the hall will meet via video conference at 5.30 p.m. We are having one item on the agenda, police department policy and community engagement. I am also going to announce that at least five council members have been registered and we'll be participating this week on the AWC, AWC annual conference via video conference. This conference will be from June 23rd to June 26th. And finally, I am also announcing, announcing that on Monday, July 6th, uh, the council will meet at seven o'clock via video conference. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, council member Van. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to announce that on July 6 at 4 p.m., Community Services Committee will be meeting via Zoom at, uh, again, 4 p.m. And the topic for discussion is Human Services Advisory Committee grant uh, recommendation process. Um, and I also want to take this opportunity to thank our community for making comments tonight and uh, in re regarding to ending structural racism and uh, want to appreciate uh, say my appreciation for staff again for um, pu putting um, thinking and also working and putting the uh, uh, terminology putting the terminology into our business plan to, uh, to make it an actionable actionable plan uh, but certainly there are a lot more that we can discuss about during this uh, regarding this resolution and that I am open to hearing more comments from my uh, colleagues uh, later on so thank you Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Benedetti. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No new business. Um, I do want to echo Council Member Vaughn's um, comments around thanking the members of the community who came out tonight to speak with us. And I also want to thank those who took the time to listen to the committee of the whole discussion and really make some thoughtful commentary about it. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Councilmember O'Halloran. Echo my colleagues, and uh, other than that, no new business. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember McGurban. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I need to announce the Transportation Committee will be meeting um, on uh, Monday, July 6th at 4.45 p.m. via video conference. Uh, there's just one item on the agenda. It's emerging issues in transportation, uh, including prioritization of the 2021, 20, uh, must, must be a typo, uh, it says 2016, um, but I'm assuming it's 2026 TIP list, and that's all. Thank you. Councilmember Prince. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Councilmember Corman. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I, I would also like to thank um, all the speakers that tonight uh, that came to uh, the, the meeting and, and uh, gave us their um, their input and just assure the community that uh, when, when they do make those comments that the audience comment, um, even if the council doesn't immediately um, have a plan, I, I want people to know that, that that I, we remember those comments. I remember comments I've, I've received from the audience 15 years ago. I, they, they really do resonate and they really do affect the way we do our business. So um, we will be continuing our work on this resolution and then continuing our work on structural racism and institutional racism and Renton. And, and um, those comments are really important to us. So thank you to everybody that provided those. And uh, with that, I have no new business to announce. Okay, thank you. Uh, what's the, what's the yes, Council President Perez. Uh, I move that the Council recess into Executive Session for 30 minutes to discuss with legal counsel representing the city in matters of polit potential litigation pursuant RCW 423110, subsection um, 1I. We will not be taking a final action and the Council meeting will be adjourned when the Executive Session ends. I second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President Perez and seconded by Council Member Corman that we go into executive session for 30 minutes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, off to executive session.